welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another McFarlane Toys news update. Today, we are not headed to the DC Multiverse side of things. Instead, we are going to be checking out several new offerings from their Marvel Statues line, of which I have just been calling them the Marvel Famous Covers. It has a nice ring to it, a nice 90s ring, kind of sort of reminiscent of things of the 90s that McFarlane used to do, but now instead of Spawn, we have Marvel. Remember Toy Biz, Marvel's Famous Covers with Aunt May? I sure do. So it's a nice little melding of things old, things new, and like I said, we have quite a few statues to talk about today. And rest assured, they are statues. It is a basic figure, no articulation. It has a stand to it, as a little nameplate usually, goes either way. And then it has a cardboard backdrop, just as an FYI. Now, before we get started, if any of these meet your fancy, if you look down in the description below, I will have affiliate pre-order links, places like Amazon, Entertainment Earth, GameStop, Target, Walmart, The Works. They may not be available everywhere right off the bat, but rest assured, if you are needing linkage, look no further than my description. And I thank you very much for using my link. So first and foremost, we have Captain America from issue 100 from the old Tales of Suspense, now Captain America 100. And I gotta say, that's a pretty cool looking figure. Like I said, there is no articulation. He comes with his shield. You've got some nice comic book shading to it. And for that alone, I do appreciate that. I like the backdrop on this too. I think a lot of people out there are wondering, well, if it's such a famous cover, how come all the characters aren't represented? And it's mainly touted as pulling out various characters in those really cool old school poses and then making a figurine statue out of it. So that's really what they're going for. It's kind of sort of a based on, and then you have something new as a result. So I will say this, Captain America looks pretty cool. I like the shading on this guy. I like the stance. I like the background, even though they are cardboard and you gotta be very careful with cardboard, but this looks to be, yes, another great addition if you are in to these Marvel famous covers. Now, next up from the amazing Spider-Man number 312, we have the Green Goblin. And this is going to be a gold label GameStop exclusive. This is a autograph collector's series. Of course, you get a trading card with Todd McFarlane's signature. Believe it or not, I have seen the platinum edition version of this Green Goblin, which basically means it does not come with the signed collector card. The gold label, you have the autograph to it. Same exact, we'll say statue, figure, no color difference, nothing like that. If you look at the artwork, he's going up against the Hobgoblin. Now, there's not a whole heck of a lot of Hobgoblin merch these days, but I am a sucker for the Hobgoblin, much as I am for Venom. More on that in just a few. And like I've said, I'm not really going after these. I did pick up Venom, but if you make a Hobgoblin and he looks cool, no promises there. I would actually love that. So the Green Goblin in person, if I'm being honest, it looks fine. It's just not something for me. But hey, it's still not a bad looking Green Goblin flying on his back glider and doing the whole glove zappage. Now, next up from X-Men number one, the Magneto cover, a mutant milestone, a legend reborn, we have Magneto. First thing that pops out to me, the red and the black amidst the purple, but you have that awesome metallic red helmet. Overall, this looks pretty solid if you are an X-Men fan, a Magneto fan. The cardboard backdrop, the artwork, looks pretty darn cool. I like the base, it says Magneto. These are very interesting. Again, they don't move, they don't do anything like that, but they are a presence on your shelf. And for that alone, if you are kind of sort of that casual action figure collector, this might work really well for you just as a centerpiece on your collection shelf. So Magneto X-Men number one, that looks pretty darn solid. Now, next up we have Miles Morales from Spider-Man number one. Again, much like the Green Goblin, I have seen this on store shelves with my own eyes, and in person, it actually looks quite fantastic. Now, this is, again, 
very pre-posed. He's got his whole electricity strike going on, Venom strike. And you got the background, which just really kind of elevates it. And then you have the logo for the base. I like it. I think it looks really cool. Now, is again something I'm picking up? No, but I will tell you, if you are a Miles Morales fan, if you like this character, this might definitely be right up your alley. It's really well done. I looked at the paint. Everything to it was really solid. So again, if you're interested, Green Goblin, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Venom, these are starting to hit Target store shelves now, or... You can just pre-order it with my links down below. Now, moving on from The Amazing Spider-Man, number 316, we have Venom. And I'll keep it short on this because I have a whole video on this character. I went to Target. I saw it. I was like, all right, you got me. This is the first one that I bought. And as I say in the video, most likely the last one I'm going to buy. I'm not a huge fan of these but for being a big Venom fan, and like I said, if they make Hobgoblin, no promises there, but it's actually really cool. And the look of this Venom is exactly what I think of with Venom. They've changed the character so much nowadays. It's just Eddie Brock as Venom, and he looks like Venom, and he's got the eyes, and he's got the big white spider symbol. He doesn't have claw feet. He's just got the booties. That's what I want to see. That is what I want to see. So if you watch the video, you can hear all my thoughts and you can see for yourself how well it pairs up with a Marvel Legends Spider-Man. So to go now from the smaller scale to now the larger scale of these Marvel famous covers from the Hulk number 345, we have the Hulk as the Gray Hulk and he's busting up his letters of his names, and it looks really cool. I think they've done a great job in kind of recreating the look of that. So well done, McFarlane Toys. This is another one. They talked about this at San Diego Comic-Con. Todd McFarlane talked about how he referenced elephant skin to really bring that look to the hide of the Gray Hulk. And I think that from going from a 2D comic book cover to then now a 3D statue, I think that it's excellently represented. The colors are there, the craggy skin, the ripped clothes. I just love how he's parting the H to the U-L-K. And then you have some of the other letters at the base. I love that. I think, again, it's very cool. You got the brickwork in the back. It's a very large statue, larger than, of course, the smaller scale. This one, as you get to the larger ones, they come with a comic book recreation, so you can read up on this issue. It's a big old box. This one is definitely very cool. Again, while I say over and over, I love these. These are great. They look great. It's going to be very, very, very picky and choosy and venom is so far the only one that really really stands out to me in terms of grabbing for the old collection but then i say that knowing full well that that hulk looks awesome so from issue 340 of the incredible hulk we have the brown costume wolverine and if you notice because of the cover his claws are popped out now it's very much the perspective of the comic book cover because his big old claws are out and you can see the reflection of the Gray Hulk, and for that alone, that is just very cool. The yellows, the browns, the looks, the very black comic book lines, the shading, all of it really makes this Wolverine stand out. So between the two of the Gray Hulk and this Wolverine, they kind of are bookends to one another, and I'm sure that if you had these side by side, they would look fantastic together, especially being on the larger scale. So no, these won't go with Marvel Legends. That is to say the Venom one definitely does, but that may not be the case with all the smaller scale of these Marvel famous covers. But for those of you who are interested, The Incredible Hulk, number 340, you get the issue, you get the statue, you get our gnarly crazy looking Wolverine with his adamantium claws reflecting a raging gray Hulk. And you know what to do with those links if you need them down below. So that will wrap it up for my quick looks at some of the brand new McFarlane Toys offerings for their Marvel statue. Nay, I say Marvel famous covers line. A lot of great characters, a lot of character selection. It's a very nice smattering of various Marvel entities, which I totally appreciate. Hey, I know these characters. I know these covers. 
and now you can add them to your shelf if you so choose. Again, links down in the description below if you want to pre-order anything, and I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most important, remember, keep bringing these on. Like I said, if you get a hobgoblin going, no promises. You got me on Venom, a a demonic-looking hobgoblin, you, you might get me there. We'll see. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.